Spurs against United. United's first away game of the season and obviously the excitement of last week, the build-up to the first game of the season here at Old Trafford was met with a big, big damp squib. This is your build-up video, everyone. Welcome to the Real Trip. This is the United stand and we are looking ahead, like I said, to our first away game of the season. Ten Hag has been talking and, to be honest, I've seen the videos, I've seen the coverage, I've seen Beth's coverage of the press conference and all I can take from that press conference from Ten Hag in the build-up to this game is that Ten Hag has been Unitedified. And by that I mean the way Ten Hag is talking. He's talking about his squad being good enough for our targets. Then I've got to start asking the next question off that of what are our targets? Our targets at the start of Ten Hag when he first came to Manchester United was basically we've got to win every single game. And he's happy with the squad that he's got apparently. Was with, obviously he was going to be asked loads and loads of questions around transfers last two weeks of the window. And the usual line that every United manager comes out with, if we're always in the market for the right players, if the opportunity comes around, we'll be there. Well, no, we won't. Stop lying, Ten, because we're not going to be there, because we ain't got no money, because no one wants to leave the club because they're on too much bleeding money. That's where we're at with that right now. So in terms of what could happen before this game, diddly squat. Uh, in terms of anything that happens past Spurs, we just don't know. But... The fact that he's talking about Johnny Evans in that press conference, no disrespect to Johnny, I love that he's back at the football club. Uh, we've already got him signed up to a pre-season contract. The fact that Harry Maguire's not going and Johnny Evans is being signed up possibly for a year, then that tells me that is our signing and we are closed books. Who else can we sell? No one wants to buy Donny and... Scott McTominay, no one's going to meet that price. Who else is there? Alvaro Fernandez and Brandon Williams, I think I said that on the previous show, maybe to get them in. But yeah, that was it from terms of transfers for 10 hours press conference. But looking ahead to this game, Spurs, I'll try and stick to the football on the pitch. I am riled at the moment, as you've seen in previous shows regarding what's going on off the pitch for United. But on the pitch, Spurs, this is going to be tough. Uh, I'm predicting a draw in this game. This is just how I see it going. Spurs actually showed promise in that first game against Brentford. They kept the ball well. They were very, they were penetrative, penetrative, attentive, or something like that is the word. They penetrated. Let's just say that there is a word to describe that. Uh, drop the comments in below and let me know what that word is. I know you're probably all laughing to yourselves right now, but it's a tongue twister, isn't it? Anyway, they got through the lines of Brentford. Let's just say that. Yes. They haven't got Harry Kane, and that is going to come back and bite them on the ass if they don't sign another striker. I'm glad they haven't brought anyone else in before they come and play it up, before we went down to Spurs and played them. But honestly, I look at the way they are, the way they played in that first game. James Madison, definitely a threat for them. The way they're playing the high line, yes, that can come and kick them back in the ass as well, because I think United, if we play the right line up, then we are definitely definitely going to, well, we're definitely going to affect the game by the way that they play. Their high line, what they play under Postacoglu, is it's going to be right into our hands, in my opinion. Rashford, Garnacho, Martial, and I'm going to say Martial, I'm not having any excuses. I said this in the week, he should be starting at number nine. We need players playing in their best positions. No more Rashford, makeshift nine, Sancho, false nine. No. We know that Highland is only two weeks away now. He's going to be back for the Nottingham Forest game. Martial, if he's fit, you play him. Get what you can out of him while he's bleeding walking on two legs. That's what you've got to do. Get Martial in at number nine, put Rashford out on the left and Anthony out on the right. You've got a dangerous front line where players played in that position where they perform their best. Simples. That moves then into midfield as well for me because Mason Mount then should probably go in a bit higher than Bruno. Bruno sits in double eight with the way that Spurs play, high up the pitch. Double eight for me and then... Mounting at 10. I think Bruno operates better for me anyway, and alongside Casemiro, I think that's where we are combative in that midfield. The energy of Mount in the press alongside Martial and Rashford and Antony, people are going to laugh because I said Martial in the press, and that actually means Martial moving. His positional sense and his know how is what he's good at in that position, Martial. He knows where to stand to sort of affect a press. And yeah, it sounds a bit complicated and it sounds like I'm going around the houses making excuses for him. You know I'm not one to make excuses for Martial, but he just holds his position well. And I think because he's used to playing number nine better than anyone else in that team that's fit right now is why he should be playing. And the link up with players that know that role just makes everything more cohesive, unlike against Wolves, where we didn't know where we were going, who we were passing to, what formations of play we were playing. 
who were just the transitions were crap, they were slow, and like Ten Hag said in his press conference, wasn't good enough. We knew, we know he wasn't good enough, and we just got away with one. That's what it was for me. It just got caught cold. We weren't fit enough. We've had a full week of training now. Players have come back. Martial's played in that game and scored behind closed doors against Everton. Let's just play players in the right bleeding positions. Round pegs, round holes, instead of trying to jam in a square peg into a bleeding round one with Rashford at number nine. No, Garnacho has to sit on the bench. Rashford, go on the left. Garnacho can impact this game from the bench. It's as simple as that for me. He got a bit too, we got a bit too carried away with him, and myself included. I thought, you know what, that game in that friendly at Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago here against Lawrence, I thought, you know what, chomping at the bit, ready to go, prove a point, go out here. And he just got eight alive by Semedo. But done and dusted. He was absolutely awful. Probably the worst player in the front line, and that's saying something because there was a load of sh crap in that performance <laughs> on Monday night, wasn't they? So, yeah, looking at that, I go, that front line, that midfield, same back line. Martinez is fit. I think that's a whole uh, whole load of baloney, to be honest, about him being unfit and had to come off for injury. He was basically a red card waiting to happen. Uh, yeah, he may have been having a niggle and there may be something we don't know, but let's be honest, the man ran 60 yards to make a slide tackle and got a yellow card in a season where we're just not going to be able to do that with the way the refs are handing them cards out. So, yeah, Martinez back in alongside Varane, who isn't going Saudi Arabia, so let's just calm that one down. No one at United is going to Saudi Arabia, not especially not anyone who we're expecting to be in the starting eleven this season anyway. So, yeah, that's the back line, obviously, and now in goal. I mean, I've talked about the threats of Spurs. I know what they're bringing. My biggest concern with the Spurs game is... New manager bounce again, Manchester United, and everyone goes on at me about this all the time. It's making excuses. Oh no, Pasta Coglu, first game in that Spurs stadium, the way that they played against Brentford, like I said, that home crowd will be buzzing. There'll be an expectation in the air, and they'll be paying for blood if United give them any sort of sniff. They're going to be on us, they're going to our throats, and they will take advantage of us. And then I'm going to be questioning the mentality of Manchester United's players again away from home. Ten Hag was asked this question in his press conference as well in terms of Manchester United's away form. Our away form against the top six teams. Spurs are not a top six team, let's be honest. But it is a tough away game, but we didn't get our points that last season. We blew a 2-0 lead playing against the Spurs team that was down in the dumps. Absolutely garbage last season. We were 2-0 up as well. They were losing every single game that they played. And you know what? Ryan Mason in charge. Give him his due. He actually pulled some out of the bag there at half time, and somehow we managed to throw that, them points away. And that did make the end of the season really difficult for us and a bit tetchy. So, yeah, I know the Spurs crowd are expecting. I know there's no Harry Kane, and hopefully that's what plays into our hands because I just feel like if Harry Kane was in this team, I'd be going into this game probably expecting United to lose just because of what performance we got against Wolves. It's taken us more games than what's needed. And I made a big point after the game against Wolves about the pre-season being a complete and not a waste of time. Because that team that played there on Monday night against Wolves played together once all of pre-season. Wolves, look at, look at the team, look at their pre-season three or four times. I looked at some different stats. I looked at Colwell, just because I was looking at Maguire and talking about Maguire, I looked at Colwell, uh, Levi Colwell from Chelsea. The guy played in the under-21s this season, uh, this this summer, in the uh, European Championships. Obviously, they won that. So he had all of that. He played more pre-season minutes than any United player did. Our pre-season is oh, it's, it's up the swanny. It's really affecting us now. I said the same thing last season after the via I think it was, that game here at Old Trafford. I said, we're not ready. We lose the first two games. I said the same thing in Vegas. I said, I don't know what to make of that pre-season. First game against Wolves, we looked like crap. We got away with one big time. Only because we've got that solidity now under Ten Hag and that battle hardness, we got through that game and got three points. We won the Wolves game because of that steel and that hardened mentality that Ten Hag implemented into this team. Now, Ten Hag can only take this team so far, in my opinion. The team and the squad that he's got now is just about good enough to fight for possibly second. So I ask, I go back to what I said at the start of this video, what are Manchester United's targets? because he says that squad is good enough for the targets that we've got in place. Well, that's not clearly fighting for the league then, is it? Because I don't think this team, going off last season, with just three players in, 
he's going to be able to challenge or close that big gap that there is to Manchester City. You let me know what you think, guys. Obviously, uh, is this squad good enough to fight this season on all fronts? 50, 60 games, Ten Hag said. Johnny Evans being added to the three that we've brought already. Is that good enough? How do we get another player in? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Who's your team for this game against Spurs? Is Martial coming back in? That's the only change for me. Martial for Garnacho. We need to give Mason Mount time. We need to let this midfield run. People are already complaining about that midfield three of Bruno, Casemiro and Mount not working. We need to give it chance. It is the right recipe. We just need, and Ten Hag needs to figure it out, figure it out quick. I'm going for a, oh, you know what, it's a 2-2, it's a score draw. It might be a Desmond 2-2 like it was last season. I've just got a feeling that's how it's going to go. Desmond 2-2, that's my prediction. Let me know what your prediction is. Who do you want in the team? Are you making any changes from the Wolves game? Let me know what you think, everybody. For me, just the one. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe to the United Stands. I'll see you outside Spurs Stadium.